Yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to hang out at the old station. They don't need a moderator. See, this just runs itself. In, in Phoenix? You know? No. San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we have our own thing going yeah, it's on. Fine. Yeah. It's good. It's fine. We don't get out enough no, we together We definitely a lot. don't, yeah. The first question is, what do you think the current biggest change or shift in TV news? Uh, uh, the answer for me would be uh, digitalization of everything, the technology. You know, we're going from having, uh, as you guys know, from having, uh, I mean, you lost camera operators years ago because the robotics came into the studios. Every station is losing people right and left because the technology is replacing them. So it's changing everything and it continues to change everything. There are a lot fewer people doing the same amount of work. And then that's not a complaint because, um, you know, we all get to do a lot of things. It's sort of the way we started out. When I started in Omaha, I wrote every word, I edited every word, I ripped the copy, I handed it to the director. And if it was a good day and I had time, I put lipstick on and went in and anchored the news. One thing you probably don't know is that Channel 4 and Channel 11 share resources. Actually, we, there's, a, there's a lot of sharing going on now because of that. Uh, we don't, you don't see 52 microphones in front of a person anymore. You'll see one uh, because we figured, uh, yeah, or somebody in management it figured it. Uh, We're just going to join it on a trial. A local basis. news service, LNS, and we're, what we're doing is consolidating our efforts so we don't have to spend uh, as much in, in people and, and money to, to cover news that everyone's covering. So if everyone's covering the same event at a news conference, uh, we share that video uh, with everyone. Uh, that does seem to go uh, counter to you know, competitive journalism, but uh, you know, journalism's taken a hit in the last few years because uh, all three of us can remember back when uh, having a newsroom was a thing of prestige and it was part of something the station had for the community. It, it was a community service. It was something that we did for the good of our viewers and the good of our community. And then somewhere along the way, I think in the 80s, it became a business. And went, oh, we can make money off these guys. It was a cash cow. Yeah. I mean, they referred to the stations on the West Coast, all of the stations, as cash cows for yeah. a long, long time. So that, that cash business, that cash cow, uh, eventually things started to change as technology changed and now uh, stations aren't nearly worth what they were before. And, uh, and we're starting to see a reemergence of the sense from some ownership groups that news is valuable because now uh, kids who have invented all these new gadgets call us content. <laughs> and content you is... You too? Yes. <laughs> these kids come up to me, what kind of content do you produce? Uh, <laughs> and then I say in my best anchor man voice, I'm, I'm a newsman. <laughs> whatever that news means. content. <laughs> We produce news, and, and so there's going to be some, at some point we're going to reach a balance between business and journalism, and that has not been done yet, but it's, it's, it's going to happen. Here's the other challenge. It'll, the anchorless news. The anchorless newscast. <gasps> it's, uh, it's, been described, it's been described as, you know, the old newsreels that everyone has seen, you know, spanning the globe, that kind of a thing. Yeah. It'll just be narrated. The reason you watch, and this has always been my philosophy, you watch the, your, whoever you trust. So look at these three people up here because you can trust all of them they, because they have really the experience and the knowledge. And to do an anchorless newscast to me is so counterproductive and it's going back to the old newsreel days and, and it's a shame. And if you don't have a strong press, you, know, you, you don't have a, a really good check and balance on the government. So um, it's, it's really important for, I hope, a little bit of optimism that I'm hearing here if it comes back. More informational stories, more things that are more hyper-local hyper that touch more people. Um, sure, we're all going to flip on the television and go, oh my God, what, you know, what was the quake? What's going on? You want us then. I maintain that we have done kind of a poor job at making ourselves relevant all the time. And that's the game. That's the news business we're getting back into. You know, when I get up at home and start watching KCAL in the morning, I go to work and I have KCAL on, and then I do see, I, by the time 6 o'clock rolls around, I'm pretty much newsed out. <laughs> well, if you want a little variety, you can just change the I channel. I do, dear. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> and if you want accuracy, you can always watch it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What, oh. what station are you on again? The most trusted news in Los Angeles. That's what it is. See, that's how it is. This is how it goes. This is how it is. <laughs> and this is what you don't get when you get a narrator. You don't get personality. You don't get the, 
the, you know, the warmth and the love that we have for our community, and you sense it when you watch us, hopefully. Charlie Sheen. I mean. Who? Carlos Remember? Estevez. <laughs> Too much. I mean, what do you guys think about all that? I mean, and, and do and do you scream at the producer and say, "Haven't we had enough of this?" Or do you, or or what? Well, initially it was pretty entertaining. <laughs> initially, yeah, for the first couple of days, uh, a little more difficult for us too because uh, of the Charlie's relationship with CBS. Yes. Uh, but nonetheless, we covered it. Uh, they didn't crack any whips. We were all waiting for them to tell us to shut up management and they didn't but uh, is there too much of it yeah Lindsay Lohan too much of that yeah Carlos you like things I love that stuff I'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's a little secret we have. you know it's a, you know yeah because that that was our stock and trade at KTLA for years and years I'll just, the, the, you know it was Charlie Sheen is the gift that keeps on giving you know it's 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 that sort of thing it's like OJ Simpson you know he continues to do bad stuff and you just go how, how does that happen benefit of this audience, uh, do you feel that uh, you use a lot of spokespeople and, and, and interview a lot of people on set and so on, uh, you know, what, what's the secret for them? Are they doing a good job, uh, uh, the spokespeople that, that come to you? Do you feel you're getting the full story when you talk to a particular person? Because there's been some controversy where some people have been hired by certain industries to make sure that a certain message went out and certain newscasts around the country have that's always been the case, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that's part of corporate that's why structure. You have yeah. Experience, experience, whether you um, experience lets you vet that, and that's the mm -hmm. best way to to say it. I mean, if if you get a hinky feeling about somebody and they come in, you're thinking, you know, they're too slick or they don't know this, or you're only getting one side of the story. That's up to you to step up. Well, I think you're seeing it right now. Um, the Japanese government is saying there's no problem at the reactor. There's no fire. We see smoke. What is that? Uh, and, and so you, you get, that's an exaggerated example. But, you know, spokespeople, I think, uh, I asked George Stephanopoulos once uh, if he ever lied to the media. He says, I don't consciously lie. I have that on tape. Subconsciously. I have him saying, I don't consciously lie. I try to give them the facts and try to make them decide what, you know, what, I, what it is I'm trying to say. Okay, so you're not lying? And so the, the point of that is that as a spokesperson, you're, you're in charge of making sure that your client puts his best foot forward and, and gets the word out about how great the, the product is. You know, right now, if you're in the nuclear industry, you know, all the spokespeople we're talking to, they're all trying to figure out how to make this, you know, make this all look okay, and it's not working very well. But it is our job to get those hinky feelings that she talks about. And our experience tells us we're not going to always get the, the right facts. But we ask you a question, and you represent the, uh, let's say, the pharmaceutical in industry, and we ask you about a, a particular product. And you say the product does this, this, and this, and this. But what about those side effects? Well, we believe the side effects are you know, reasonable considering the, the, the benefits and whatever. And so then it's our job to go to a doctor and ask him or her. And then go to a patient who's taken that medication, ask them what they experienced and then try to find some research that says, all right, the research says this. So we just don't take your word for it. We take the kind of the combination of all of that, present it to our audience, and let our audience make up their minds. But I think what's happened, especially as it relates to, to public relations, is that what do we do as TV people to make your clients still use us as a resource to promote, to promote products or promote ideas or promote, you know, whatever, when we have such a, a much smaller piece of the pie. The danger that I have, uh, the, the, the fear that I have, is that what she said doesn't come true, and that is that uh, the late night news has become irrelevant because they're, we've heard everything.